hello welcome back um so today i'm actually doing a video that was requested thank you roxanne for re requesting this video um i probably this it would probably take me some time to actually get to this cookbook because i'm such a neutral kardashian fan kardashian jenner fan um i know all about their lives but i've probably only seen like four episodes of their show ever um so i'm doing this cookbook i'm gonna show you how to make it and then we're gonna jump back first you want to boil the water for your macaroni get that cooking then put three tablespoons of butter on the stove add three tablespoons of flour Add a tablespoon of mustard powder or dry mustard. Um, heat up some milk and then add that in. Whisk it. I had like a baby whisk and I moved to the big whisk. Add in half an onion that's shredded. Paprika. Ooh. Bay leaf. Then you let that sit for like 10 minutes, put it in a pot, and then start adding the cheese mixture, which is a combination of goat cheese, Velveeta, sharp cheddar, um, add in eggs, three whisked eggs, mix it all together. Oh yeah, Parmesan is in the cheese mixture too. Um, so yeah, you're supposed to mix it in with the cheese and then put the cheese on top and then breadcrumbs but I was all out of breadcrumbs so I just put a little bit of cheese on top and I mixed all the cheese in with it but yeah very stringy and gooey some good shots here delicious Okay, adding three cups of Monterey cheese, a cup of ricotta, a cup of feta cheese, dill, parsley, and mint get added, three tablespoons of each, two eggs, I think. I already returned this book to the library, so I don't have the exact recipe, but I pretty much remember everything. Sheet of phyllo dough, um, then you brush it with butter. Use a pizza cutter to cut it into three uh, different pieces. A teaspoon of the mixture and then my cameraman showed me how to fold it like a paper football. I was struggling for a bit there trying to figure, out, figure it out. Um, yeah, and then just fold that down and then you just want to brush it with butter once again before you put it in the oven. looks good very greasy gotta wipe them off with a paper towel all right cup of butter some uh, Baker unsweetened chocolate or cocoa let that melt together uh, one cup of flour a teaspoon of baking powder a teaspoon of salt two cups of sugar, add in the hot mixture with the sugar. You want it to cool down a little bit before you add it in. Stir that together, add in four eggs, slowly one by one, then slowly fold the flour mixture in with the wet. Get that nice and mixed up. Then add the semi-sweet chocolate chips. Pour it into a greased baking pan. <laughs> uh, she says to grease it with Crisco, but I didn't, I didn't buy that just for this, so I greased it with butter. Picked one brownie from the middle. The food is made. And what I made is I made Kim Kardashian's macaroni and cheese. I made the brownies that Chris always makes for Rob. And I wanted to make something Armenian and there wasn't much in the cookbook. And I made cheese borage. 
So yeah, I'm very excited to try these because I've definitely never heard of them, never made them, never tried them. So that will be exciting. This cookbook is probably the most basic cookbook ever. Like there's, there's a recipe, the recipes are just, it's okay, like macaroni and cheese. It's like, okay, most of us in our mind have a decent recipe for macaroni and cheese. The only reason I made this one is because it was Kim's macaroni and cheese. And the only thing that I really saw that was different about her recipe was that she included onions, which I have seen sometimes, but not often. Um, the other recipes are like a wedge salad with green goddess dressing. It's just like, it's definitely stuff that you've you've made before over and over again. The other thing was like Chloe's fried chicken. It was it's like the most obvious recipe ever and I just feel like I I, I actually looked in the cookbook for something that would be like a challenge. And I guess this is as close as we get to something like truly challenging. A little background on Kris Jenner and why she started cooking is when she got married to Robert Kardashian, they got for a wedding present, they got like a cooking class. So she took the, they both, I think they both took the cooking class together and she, she just learned a lot from that, I guess. But it's like her recipes are so basic that it's like, okay, so, but she doesn't get inventive. And also I'm a little confused at like how much are her recipes because there's a couple in here called like Chris's like Chris's pasta primavera so it's like if you named an individual recipe something that's yours but like aren't all the recipes yours that's kind of a little confusing okay I want to start with the mac and cheese because it looks amazing this is really good Okay, I'm actually going to switch this out because I don't like to smell chocolate while I'm eating this. The onion. This is, this is surprisingly good. So, slight fail. I thought I had panko breadcrumbs, but I didn't. And they're supposed to go on top, so I just sprinkled cheese instead. This is... Chris claims that this is the best macaroni and cheese she's ever had. I think she's right. By the way, this whole cookbook, if I were, if I were Chloe, Courtney, Kylie, Rob, or Kendall, I would be very depressed after reading this because it is like an ode to Kim. Like, so to set the time, when this cookbook came out, Kim had had, she had just had North, but I think when they were like making the cookbook, she was still pregnant. And then um, when they were like going through like the cover and stuff, it, or the dedication has North in it. So I don't know if North was born yet, but there's a picture of them all in here. I think I have it tagged. And it says like me and my goddesses and goddess to be but it's like wait why did you have to separate goddess to be like you could just say me and my goddesses and then we would clearly see that one's pregnant so there's a lot okay there's a lot of stuff like that in here and i think it's like it's kind of sad like she even talks about how one of her very first recipes is about how when robert kardashian her first husband was suffering cancer like um kim would make him cream of wheat and she has the recipe for cream of wheat in here and then she talks about how robert would always say that kim was his favorite and she was like he's not supposed to say that but he did and i was like I, there's just so many kids in this family and it's like one is the obvious star and it makes me sad like it's rob's brownies like she talks about how um she when rob went to college she made him two trays of these brownies which is crazy whenever i hear about moms doing that i'm just like those like most my brother 
well, I don't know about my brother, but most boys would like eat those brownies within like three days. Like they wouldn't go and get groceries. They wouldn't go and get food. They would just eat the free food that they have. And it makes me sad to think of boys eating pans of brownies. But she's just trying to be helpful. Or I guess a lot of what she talks about is Food is the way that she shows love. And I guess that's also an Armenian thing. Although Chris, Chris doesn't talk about being Armenian. She talks about being from the South. So, and then Robert Kardashian was Armenian. So a lot of that side of the family was Armenian. Like this is Robert Kardashian's sister's recipe. Her name is Cece. This is... This is so good. There's like so much cheese in this. Another thing is like they don't sell Velveeta anymore. Do you guys know about this? You can't buy a block of Velveeta. You can buy the Velveeta mixed with the noodles like mac and cheese ready to go. Or you can buy what I did, and it's like the Velveeta slices for like a sandwich. Packy cheese, as I used to call it when I was a kid. I just made some notes. I'm going to go through some, some highlights of the book. So, as most of us know, Kris Jenner was best friends with Nicole Brown Simpson. So she has a little ode to Nicole Brown Simpson in here. Um, apparently Nicole would make her famous chicken nachos and bring them over. And then this is what I mean by basic is like, it's like a recipe for nachos, like tortilla. But I get she's doing like an ode to her friend. So I can understand she probably wanted to include something in this just reminded her the most of Nicole, but I don't know. I don't really buy a cookbook to you know learn how to make nachos unless there's like a twist on it or something then i can understand i was pretty surprised that there were like no recipes devoted to or made by kylie because doesn't she she's like she has a couple i've seen like buzzfeed make some of her stuff like oh make Kylie is ramen and it's like she adds a bunch of stuff to like pre-packaged ramen and stuff like that did she have a cooking YouTube I might be wrong but I, was, I thought for sure there would be something from her but like I said it's mainly about Kim although Chris does talk about oh there's also nothing for Courtney that's weird it's really just Kim and Rob and Chloe. She talks about how uh, Chloe is like the chef of the family after her and like how if she had a dinner party uh, lined up and she was late, she could always call on Chloe to start the dinner before she got there and it would, it would run smoothly. And sometimes the guests would even show up before her. This luxurious lifestyle this is definitely something I wanted to show. The fridge. I don't know if this is a thing in the Kardashians, like their fridge. This is insane. This is crazy. She talks about how when she was a stay at home mom, she, she just cared about making sure all of her children's needs are met. And for her that meant making sure the fridge was fully stocked with everything that they might need at any time. Ha have you ever seen anyone's fridge look like this? This is, except for um, Chai City. Oh my gosh, remember that? Bam, hit him with a freeze pop. That's like the only other fridge I can think of that's like this. This is insane. This is my dream. This, seriously, any beverage that I want that I could choose from is my dream. Like, like all the LaCroix flavors and other, and like um, Topo Chico. And then um, 
you know, maybe some, what's that, like stevia soda. I like that. I mean, most of this stuff I probably wouldn't drink just because it's like so sugary. But dang, if you are wondering what Chloe's fried chicken recipe is, the ultimate fried chicken recipe, as Chris calls it, you take chicken, you soak it in buttermilk, you batter it, and then you fry it. That's literally how you make fried chicken. But okay, I get it. It's supposed to be like a family, family cookbook type of thing. Apparently Kris Kardashian's also obsessed with uh, table settings, which she does like the thing that I've literally never seen anyone in real life do, ever, where you take a plate, then you put a smaller plate on top of it, and then you put like a smaller plate on top of that, and then you have like a napkin here, and you have a napkin here, and then you have like 10 pieces of silverware around you. I don't know. I've never seen that before. Only in like movies where they go to like a fancy restaurant, but I don't, oh, and she talks about how like her kids always get her like really nice china. I think it's like Hermes china, like every year. I'm pretty sure. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. Macaroni and cheese, five out of five. That was truly delicious. I'm going to need my fork for the brownie. It's just very decadent very decadent it has like that perfect sound I don't really know what these are supposed to taste like the spices in here are good the mint the parsley and what else was in here Still, hmm, it's a little bland. Like it doesn't, it calls for pepper, but it doesn't call for salt. And I thought maybe the cheese would make it salty, but I could use something. It's actually really good for, for just an appetizer. It's a little dry, but it's not too rich. Hmm. Things like this are just kind of fun to eat because I rarely make something that has like this kind of preparation. Like I feel like this is only something that I might have at like a wedding and they're like, walking around after the ceremony with like appetizers or at some like fancy holiday party or something. So I've been using the leftover moon juice cheese that I made because I made like two cups of it whenever I need ricotta and something. So, like, I made it with some pasta earlier this week, and then this recipe called for ricotta, and I used it in this recipe. And honestly, it tastes good. So for a dessert, there was one other thing that I kind of wanted to make, but it didn't have any special symbolism for the family, like this does, like, with Rob. Like, now, if I ever make these again, I'll always think of Rob, but... I, I've been trying to get ready for Thanksgiving because I'll be making the meal this year. Um, and I wanted to try to, she has like, this book is full of holiday stuff, I guess because she likes to entertain so much. And there's a sweet potato souffle and I kind of wanted to make that, but I thought Rob's brownies would have more significance, but that looks really good brownie Wait. Oh, 
hard outer shell. That's a, that's a brownie. I mean, she didn't break the mold on this recipe. I always imagine like if I was on MasterChef or like Great British Bake Off and I had to like, you know, you have to like memorize the recipes at least to a certain degree so you're not slow. And so I like to think I have some sort of a little bit of how you make something like if someone was like make a brownie go and it's like yeah it's pretty much just this recipe like butter baking chocolate chocolate chips flour so the last story in here I wanted to share that I thought was good was the story of Kris Jenner going to Jennifer Lopez's house <clears throat> she goes to Jennifer Lopez's house. She walks in. The first thing she sees, this amazing kitchen. Oh my God, Jennifer Lopez has an amazing kitchen. The highlight of the kitchen, the oven. She says, Jennifer, where did you get this oven? And Jennifer's like, wait, what kind, what's it called? Oh, it's a stove. My fault. The La Cornu stove. I'm probably not saying that correctly. It's probably French. This story is about luxury, by the way. Chris, mesmerized by the stove, goes home. Two days later, she orders the stove. The stove comes to her kitchen. She replaces it. She moves out her old stove, puts in the new stove. She looks at her kitchen. <sighs> Nothing's right. This won't do. The stove is overpowering the rest of my kitchen. She calls her, what is it called? Her interior decorator. And she's like, listen, we need to remodel my kitchen. Not just a couple tune-ups. We need to redo the whole thing. It needs to go with the stove. So, that's a classic Kris Jenner story. Oh my god. This cover really stresses me out too. Because it's like, first of all, this banner makes her look like way lo longer than she should be. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But also, she's like not really chopping the pepper. She's just kind of like shaving the edge. Makes me uncomfortable. The cookbook design is fugly. Oh, I wonder if this is the stove. Okay, this might be the special stove. Oh yeah, here's like how she plates. I think the pictures of the food are also really boring and there's not that many of them. I give this brownie a three out of five, or maybe even a two and a half. It's not, it's like just a basic brownie. Like I've had brownies that like the chocolate like goozes and goozes, <laughs> oozes and is gooey inside. Kris Jenner, although you may not be lazy in life, I think you might have been a little lazy with this cookbook or maybe you just always cooked very basic and that's what you wanted to share with the world. Okay, maybe so. Maybe you had a chef help you. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that you did. Um, Cause some of the recipes are just like very, very, very basic recipes. And I just feel like you probably had someone fill in what you thought a family might eat. <laughs> of normal family um i give this cookbook the macaroni and cheese was bomb listen once again kim kardashian won she's the best 
The mac and cheese was bomb. The rest of the stuff was just so-so. And it was really hard to even pick anything I wanted to make from this cookbook because everything was so bland. I'm gonna give it a two and a half out of five. So, thank you Roxanne for recommending this. Um, it was definitely interesting to read and to learn a bit about her. Um, it was very, very surface level, whereas a lot of the other cookbooks I've read really dive deep into like uh, their history of food and wanting to cook and stuff like that. This was very surface level. Um, if you have a cookbook that I should try, let me know in the comments down below. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.